Hi, everybody. Welcome to the second segment, episode 210, Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. I'm Weston Pew. Today on the second segment, we're going to talk about 10 myths costing you time and money. Zach, I really want to thank you for bringing that up so quick because... <laughs> Jeff wrote a really long title, and uh, we don't have it here, and I was really kind of concerned that I was going to switch, switch, switch around. Uh, oh, good times. Anyway, the, these are really interesting, though. I was doing a little research to put this together, and I, and as I, you know, a lot of times we start out with a list of 10 things, and we mm-hmm. narrow it to five that we think are going to be of interest. And this week you said all 10? I thought all 10 really made sense. So <laughs> jumping right into number one. Stone countertops are indestructible. Oh my gosh, this one makes me super nervous because... And that is a myth. It is a myth because I see, you know, I get nervous when you have people over and you see them hop up and they sit on that edge and you're like, no, 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 that'll snap. Mm -hmm. The other thing too that I've noticed people doing it, that when you change a light bulb and they jump up on them and Mm -hmm. they walk on that thin spot that where the sink is Mm -hmm. that is the most fragile spot in your entire countertop and it goes there is no fix for that yeah it's it's they are not indestructible you can mark them up you can burn them you can scratch them they are they are highly durable but they are not indestructible if you're a red wine drinker and it's white you really need to be careful and our number two is gutter guards are maintenance free. That is a myth. That is a huge myth and that it could cost you a lot of issues later on if those do not get cleaned out. There is the small amount of dirt that will build up. It will actually cause you a perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes mm-hmm. in the summer. Yeah, if you're if you're yes, absolutely it sure is. So, number 3 your smoke detector's test button is foolproof. I think this is really interesting and I think that it's a good way to start the testing procedure but I, it, it, the point is here is it's not the last one you need to actually take a match blow mm-hmm. it out and wave the smoke or somehow get smoke up mm-hmm. there incense whatever but it needs to actually activate because it detects smoke in the air not because you pressed a button yes mm-hmm. next and is a lemon is a great way to clean a disposal even, okay, I love this smell. Of, I didn't, I was really bummed that that was a myth. Well, you know, and the, the 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 thing about it is, it will it is corrosive to metal, and so it is corrosive to the interior of your mm. your disposal, and it's also corrosive to your pipes. You know, how many times do you you know squeeze lemon juice and you know you pour half of it out down on the down the drain? That's going to be just as corrosive, but it's not it, it's not a it's not the answer. There are a lot of other chemical products you can use that are not going to tear it up. Actually, the most disheartening thing about that entire little, this one is the fact that I have to tell Jason he's right mm-hmm. because he bought these little soap pods that go in the dishwasher, the dishwasher mm-hmm. disposal and turn it on. And he's like, no, we should be using these. I was like, no, just use lemons. Mm-hmm. Well, it smells good. Mm-hmm. Mowing your lawn super short means you'll save you'll mow your yard less often. And the only reason why that might actually be true is because you killed your yard. Yes. Texas. <laughs> I was like, no. Where's he? <laughs> Where is he going with this? Stay with me. Stay with me. So here's the deal. It is Texas. If you're not from here, it gets very hot in the summer. It can get up to 110. When that happens, your yard is going to be fatigued. You should actually let your yard get longer, not shorter, because it cannot keep the moisture in the soil when it's too short. So it's, it's really interesting that for the health of grass, that was, I, this is not part of the research, but for the health of grass, it really should be longer than anyone wants to see their lawn be. 100%. And so when they're cutting it, they're really cutting it for aesthetics, aesthetics as opposed to the actual health of the grass. Yep. And that's St. Augustine. Mm-hmm. The crazy thing about St. Augustine is St. Augustine does not reseed itself. It is a runner. Mm-hmm. And when you kill it, it takes a long time to come back. Bermuda, it can self-seed and it can come back. It rounds out more. What about Zoya? I don't know about that one. That is a hybrid, but that's more of a shade one. So, mm-hmm. hey, anyway. Patrick Dickinson, if you're listening, give us a shout out and let us know what Jeff's <laughs> answer is. And the next one, we've got CFLs cost too much and are dangerous. So this is compact fluorescent lights. That's so interesting. I didn't think they were dangerous. Why do you think they're dangerous? Well, they contain mercury for one thing. So if you break them and you breathe in that mercury dust, it's dangerous for you. Um, they are not as energy efficient as what is available now. You know, we kind of mm-hmm. shifted from incandescent bulbs, which is the usual things with a little filament in right. them that they run. At, and then we shifted over to the compact fluorescents because fluorescent lights, by and large, are more efficient than mm-hmm. 
incandescence, but now that we have all this LED technology like we talked about in our show last yeah. week, it, they are so much more efficient than those little curly CFLs. I, yeah, and the other thing too with the curly CFLs, they don't dim all the way. Have yeah, you they, do, that? Yeah, they do not. Yeah, You can get the dimmer for them, mm-hmm. but it's still when it gets to the lowest setting, it kind of goes mm-hmm. flickers. No. All mm-hmm. right. On to the next one. A trendy kitchen redo will increase my home value. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I think it should have been. Well, I wonder if we should have written it where it said we get a dollar to dollar on resale. Yeah, uh, it maybe. does increase your value if you do yeah. it right. Well, it it does. There's a couple of like, it's hard for people like Joe consumer who has a house. Mm-hmm. They don't have the 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 resources, and I'm talking about the you know the trades people. Uh, to be able to do that type of project. You, generally, you're going to have a general contractor involved, yes. and a general contractor is going to charge you based upon the size of the the, the job mm-hmm. for their time to be in. So, you know, National Association of Realtors statistics showed uh, last year that only 87% of the, uh, 87 cents of every dollar actually comes back to you as a mm-hmm. homeowner when you do a big kitchen remodel. And forever, everybody was like, it's a one-to-one. And it's really not. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing is that in Dallas, and I hate to say this, but in Dallas, I feel like if you don't nail it, that it is actually a negative on the resale of your house. Absolutely. I, well, that goes for a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, yeah. Dallas gets real picky. The other thing, too, is I think you're going to have to actually buckle down because this can be a very expensive venture and hire someone to make sure it gets done right. And there's someone to help you hold subs and distribution mm-hmm. accountable. Yes, and you know the 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 return on it is really so. There's a couple of different ways. One is, you know, you want to have a certain house. Uh, I'm sorry, you want to have a certain kitchen to have as your kitchen. And so, right. go ahead and redo it. It's go, you're going to get use out of it for however long you live there. But that value, and unless you go another twenty or thirty years, that value is still going to be there when you get ready to resell it. And definitely, definitely research the cost of appliances. Yes. Yeah, not there right now. And don't go trendy. <laughs> don't don't go trendy in your tile. Don't go trendy in your color. Don't go because uh, trendy does not last time. Mm-mm. Good classic. So we hope you found found this very very. Oh whoa! Contra- wow, <laughs> did you, <laughs> wait, wait. Zach, did you just surprise me with one? No, <laughs> did I just miscount? Yeah. You know what? Oh, three more. Golly, I got snow on the brain. Go on, Jeff. What's this one? <laughs> so this is. A recommendation of a friend for a contractor is always a great resource. And again, that's a myth. There are some great contractors out there. I'm sure that those contractors have friends. So in some instances, the referral from the friend does make sense. But always check out who who it is you're going to be using. Get, uh, I always like to get the names and phone numbers of people who they are currently working on. That's a good point. Um, you know, they're not going to give you the names and phone numbers of the people that they, you know, that, that are not happy with them for whatever reason, whether it's their fault or the homeowner's fault. Um, also do, uh, you know, what you can of a limited background search on them. You know, the Internet has opened so much information up to be able to put together. So um, do your research on it. Talk to two or three different people about it. I would say this much. Given the fact that we know people on the monthly that are redoing stuff, and we know agents that mm-hmm. constantly are talking, reach out to us on this one and let us know if you're looking for a handyman because this is one of those situations when it can go from perfect to bad overnight. Mm-hmm. Quickly, yep. Uh, it's, it's disheartening. So our number nine? Turning off your AC when you leave saves you energy. And I get the concept of this, but I think that because if you are doing this in the middle of summer, that is a huge disservice to both your AC unit and to the house because you're really going to take and accrue a huge startup cost. And depending on how long you were gone and how hot we got, how hot the temperature was outside, your house could take, you know, six to eight hours running at a completely different level Mm -hmm. to get you cooled off neutralizing any savings that you might have had. Yeah, if you're leaving, you know, raise the air conditioning up to 80 degrees. Mm-hmm. It's going to, t- when you, especially now that we've got remote access to almost all of our thermostats, you know, when you get ready to go home, turn the temperature down with your phone, and by the time you get there, it'll probably be at the temperature you want it to be. Smart homes to help save everything, I tell mm-hmm. you. What will they so, think of next? Yeah, how many more do we have? I, one more. Okay. <laughs> permits. We don't need no stinking permits. This is one of the ones that really... When I saw this, I was like, we could do an entire episode just on this because yeah. in the seller's disclosure alone, there is a declaration that you're making that all permits necessary were pulled for this. Mm-hmm. 
And by doing that, it, someone goes and finds out you didn't pull a permit for electrical water, whatever that might be that requires, you are on the hook and there is now evidence that they can be used against you. Yes. And in the city of Dallas, there uh, there is an online permit uh, record. Mm -hmm. So you can actually go search by property address. You know, I know one of the things that we do when we're representing somebody, especially if they're buying a house that's just gone through a renovation, right. we're going to go to the website and see if the see if they that person has pulled permits on it. Especially when the description says completely remodeled. And you're like, really? How remodeled <laughs> new plumbing, is it? New electrical, uh -huh. new, new breaker panel, new, you know. So it's just one of the situations that can get yourself in a lot of hot water. You think you're saving money up front, but it can come back to get you later on when you least expect it. So I hope you found that helpful. If there's any of these you want to talk about or have questions on, please just drop them down into the comments. We'll be happy to respond. And with that, just remember, we want to be realtors for life. When you're ready to talk real estate, you can reach us online, by phone, or by text at 214-377-2223. And remember, we want to be a Realtors for Life.